Melodic patterns are essential for jazz improvisation, composition, and to improve your technique. There are plenty of well-known books to study and practice melodic patterns, such as Hannon, the famous thesaurus of scales and melodic patterns by Nicholas Slonimitsky, the Jerry Bergonzi Inside Improvisation Series, and many more. These are all great resources, and we certainly recommend them to any student that is serious about learning music. But one can only include a limited amount of information and examples in a 200-page book. You might find plenty of patterns for the major and minor scales and triads, such as in Hannon, but no other scale or mode would be covered. Maybe some examples in the key of C, but none in the key of B-flat. And of course, no mention of approach notes or escape tones. But imagine if every time you open Hannon or any of the other books, you could decide which scale you want to study or which patterns or concepts you would like to use and combine. Or if you could let the book create an exercise for you. All right, so we're going to get to our patterns panel by just clicking on this P right here. If you load this up and you see that everything is written out like this, like triads, you can just turn that off by clicking on this harmonize button up here. I'm not sure on default how it's going to load. Sometimes it may look like this. Sometimes it may look like this. If you see this and want it to look like this, then just click on the harmonize button right up here and you'll have single notes to read at a time. Next, we're gonna limit our range to two octaves. We're gonna limit whatever pattern we have loaded. Currently, we just have in C Ionian, stepping up to the next note in C Ionian, one at a time. If I wanna limit that or any other pattern to two octaves or one octave or the full range, I can do that over here to the with the limit patterns to feature. So I was, as I was just mentioning, what we have loaded here is this one arrow up uh, pattern, which basically just means whatever I have loaded over here, in this case, C Ionian, this pattern is going to step up to the next note in C Ionian. So if you have another pattern loaded that isn't a scale or a mode, like for example, let's do this. Let's load a triad. We're gonna load a major triad. I'm gonna click on that and just double click on that rather and drag it over here. And now what I have is basically a C triad, C, E, G, C. Go back to our patterns panel. So this arrow up is just telling us that we're going to the next note in the pattern. Not that we're necessarily uh, stepping up a second or anything like that. Sometimes this arrow up can indicate a third or a fourth or whatever you have loaded over here. So let's go back to our Ionian. Again, I'm just gonna search, do a quick search Ionian, drag and drop that over here, back to the patterns panel. And then we have our safe and friendly C major scale. So let's go to our patterns collection to, to load some preset patterns that are already in Tessitura Pro. We can close this window by clicking on that and that should expose the patterns collection that sits below the preferences panel. So here I have some recent patterns that I've been using and messing around with, but we have basically five levels of patterns you can mess with from beginner, intermediate, advanced, master, all the way up to what we're calling wizard. So we'll start with like a level one pattern first. Something simple. All right, so here we're skipping up, we're moving up two scale degrees or two notes within the Ionian pattern twice. So going from C to E and then here E up to G. And this brings us down three notes in C Ionian back to D, one, two, three. And this pattern will continue all the way up two octaves as we had selected that earlier in the preferences panel. If we want to hear what it sounds like, we just click on the play button. So it's currently loaded up uh, in a triple meter. So you're hearing three eighth notes for every beat. Let's slow it down first of all, change the metronome, how about 120? And take the triple meter option off. So now what we'll have are two eighth notes per beat. Kind of cool because we've created a, a three note pattern within the melody, but we're using uh, a duple meter to play it. So you can see how the options 
to come up with all kinds of cool creative patterns are, are there with, uh, with Tessitura Pro. If I want to change the rhythm altogether, let's do just regular quarter notes. I click on that right here. But first, you see it added, it added quarter notes to my previous pattern or my previous rhythm. Let's get rid of the previous rhythm first, and then there we go. So we had eighth notes. I'm going to get rid of that and change it to whatever I want, quarter notes. And so on, you get the idea. So, so that's one of the preloaded patterns. And there are all kinds of other preloaded patterns in here. Some of the Hannons are already loaded into Satura Pro for you. There's, there's Hannon number one right there. Um, and then the wizard patterns get really interesting too. So if you go all the way down here, you can see all kinds of cool, unique things. Also, what we can do within Testura Pro, let's go back to something a bit simpler. I'm gonna use this intermediate ascending ladder pattern to illustrate this, is with some options up here, if you've seen the pattern is take, taking me up to this C right here, but if I wanna go back down again, like I would within a Hannon, all I have to do is click on this retrograde right here. Let's go back to eighth notes, triplets, and let's listen to this. So it'll take me up and then back down again to the note that we started on. Pretty cool. So now let's talk about creating our own pattern. All right, we can do that. I'm gonna get rid of the retrograde real quick. We can do that by clicking on this gear right here and then in front of us up here, we have all the options uh, to create our own pattern. Let me get rid of X, X, the existing pattern that was already there. So what if we want to do something a little bit outside the box like this? Let's go up four scale degrees. Now this is going to give me a fifth based on the pattern I already have here. And then down three. Let's listen to what that sounds like. Awesome. How about if we complicate it even further? Uh, I don't know. I'm just riffing here. Let's see what this sounds like. All right, so you can see, you can do whatever you want and the possibilities are almost endless as far as what kind of patterns you wanna come up with and how you want to play them, how fast you want to play them, whether you want to use th this triple meter or duple meter. So let's say you want to edit the rhythm that you want to use for the pattern you've created or, or any other pattern uh, for that matter. First thing I got to do is close this editing window over here so I can open this one over here for the rhythms. So here you see we have all these different rhythms to choose from. What's currently loaded is an eighth note rhythm. Let's say, let's get rid of that. Let's say I wanted to do a dotted eighth, 16th rhythm. I find my dotted eighth note, add that. I find my 16th note, add that, and then press play. Pretty cool. Let's do something different. Let's get rid of that. How about 16th, eighth, 16th? Let's see what this does. Whoa. Wacky. So if you're one of those people that don't like listening to the metronome while you're practicing your pattern, you can just turn that off by clicking on the metronome right there. You'll get the count off initially, but then you won't hear the clicks as you're exercising the pattern. You may also notice that before the pattern starts, you hear an initial chord. If you want to turn that off, you come up here and click on that. So now I've gotten rid of the, the chord that plays at the beginning and the metronome playing during the exercise. You just hear the clicks, just hear the count off. All right. So with this rhythm editor, you can do all kinds of crazy things that wh whatever you want to do, you can come up with whatever you can come up with, with these default rhythms, you can upload into the app and it will do it for you. And it will play it for you at whatever speed you want 
and then you can practice it on any instrument. So just like before, when we had all these um, preset melodic patterns, let's load that up real quick. We also have down here, all of these preset rhythms that I can then superimpose. Let's, I don't know, this one. Right. So that rhythm has now been loaded right here into our pattern. Let's hear what that sounds like. All right, so you notice the rhythm and the rhythm that we loaded didn't affect what we're seeing here, but just know that it's been loaded into the pattern by looking at your rhythm editor up here. Let's do straight 16th notes. There it is right there. So remember, if I want to change anything else about this pattern, like going back down again, I can click on the retrograde. I can add the chord again at the beginning. I can have the metronome go back on. Or if I want to go slower, I can just change my metronome setting here. If I want to go back to the triplet meter. So those are 16th note triplets. So let's talk about rhythmic displacement, this, this feature up here. So let's go to a, a simpler rhythm. I'm gonna go back to eighth notes real quick to, to illustrate this. So let's do an eighth note pickup. I'm gonna turn the triple meter off first, since we're talking about eighth notes, and slide this over to that eighth rest right there. So what that is going to do effectively is add an eighth note pickup to the pattern. This C is effectively gonna be on the and of four in a pickup measure before the pattern officially starts. Let's just listen to it too, so you guys can hear what it sounds like. Right, so you click two, three, four, and one is what you have here now. So we've displaced where the emphasis or where the beat is. So on the other hand, we can Let's put it back on one again. That's this middle hash mark right there. So now everything's gonna land right on one again. Right. Anything to the right of that is gonna create syncopation. So if I wanna start on the and of one, all I'm gonna do is slide it back over here to this eighth rest. So this is gonna put this eighth rest on one. You're gonna hear this C come in on the and of one. So let's let's try a different pattern. Let's do this 16th dotted eighth. So now that's been loaded, I can see that right here. And let's do a 16th note pickup with that. All right. So now we basically, since we have 16th note pickup and the pattern starts with a 16th note, that 16th note basically represents our pickup note. We put it back on one, one E, two E, three E, four E, right on the downbeat, all right? So you have all these different options for rhythmic displacement now within your rhythms for the pattern that you've loaded or created or whatever. So after you've created your melodic pattern and you've decided what rhythm you wanna use, what rhythmic pattern you wanna use with that, you can now also change the key that you're, you're playing your exercise in. Currently we have it loaded in C, but let's say I want to go to the key of F. I'm going to rotate my circle, boom. And now the pattern we have created is in F. We have the key signature loaded right here so that we know all of our Bs are flat, but let's say we want to get rid of the key signature and just have a flat sign in front of all the Bs as a nice friendly reminder. We'll go to the preferences panel over here, bring that up, and then once we're in our preferences panel, all I have to do is turn that off. And now the flat sign is in front of all of our Bs. So once we've turned the key signature off, you see that the flat signs are now in front of the Bs that are relevant to our key. Each one of these lines basically uh, represents a measure. So you're gonna see the flat sign in front of this B and not that B because it still applies. Same thing over here. It's gonna be in front of this B but that, not that B because it still applies. Once we've gone to the next line, uh, the app treats it as a new measure. So you see the accidentals get reapplied here and then again here. So let's turn our keys and back on and talk about 
this little shortcut over here. This key will change uh, keys again. So what I just did was go to the next uh, key in the circle of fifths. So we went from F to B flat. Next will be E flat and then A flat. And it just keeps navigating around the circle of fifths until eventually you've gotten through all 12 possible keys. Let me go back to C real quick. Now, if I wanna change the way that button behaves, I can do this. Right now, it's set to follow the circle of fifths, but if I wanna go chromatically up, CH is our abbreviation that we're using for chromatic, chromatically up to the next key, in other words, taking me from C to C sharp or D flat, I can do that. And then it'll take me to D and then E flat and then E and so on. If I wanna go chromatically down, if I want that to be the preset or the default, I just click on that. If I want to, every time I click on this button to have it modulate up a major third, I can do that or a minor third, I can do this. So let's set it back on circle. I wanna show you one more thing. Uh, so now it'll navigate through the circle of fifths again, D and then G and let's go back to C. If I turn this on here, and I'm gonna crank this up for demonstration purposes to, to well, whatever, 280. Once the auto button has been turned on, what it will do is take the preloaded pattern with the preloaded rhythm that we have and just keep automatically going around the circle of fifths. It's gonna be circle of fifths because that's what we have selected. And it will just modulate from key to key to key. And eventually you'll get through all 12 major keys via the circle of fifths with the preloaded pattern. Let's also change the rhythm for, for demonstration purposes also. Let's just use a simple 16th note rhythm. So you saw me get rid of the old rhythm, click on the X a couple of times and then added what I wanted to be here. Let's turn off the retrograde too, just so we, we can get through the keys a little faster. Go back to C, I don't know what happened here. Ah! There we go. Okay, so now we're on C again, and it will go around the circle of fifths to F, to B flat, to E flat. F. And so on. All without ever having to click on the mouse, and you can keep your hands on whatever instrument you're practicing, and then just go through all 12 keys. So there's a lot of the features that you can you can get out of the Testatura Pro uh, practice panel. Um, I know we meant to do like a quick video. There's just too much that the, the app can do uh, for me to kind of make it as, as concise as maybe you'd like to be. There's also a bunch of other stuff that we didn't really get into today that we, that we will with other videos. Like these approach notes and these approach tones and ornaments and escape tones and inversions and we can harmonize the pattern. This feature over here we'll talk about later too about changing modes. All the things we didn't get to today, we will talk about in, in other videos. But hopefully after this video, you can at least get uh, a lot out of, out of this feature. Um, maybe not everything, but like I said, we'll talk about how to get all those other features incorporated later. So that's it for now. Don't forget to watch our other tutorials and demos. Uh, send questions and comments to MDEX Music. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot.